Hey, my name is Thomas Maurer and I'm, I'm here with Karim Hanif from the Azure Stack HCI team. Karim is a PM in this team and he will talk about how Azure Stack HCI is delivered as a hybrid Azure service. Hi, Thomas. Thank you so much for uh, having me. Uh, and my name is, uh, again, like Kirim Hanif. I'm a senior program manager here in uh, Microsoft and uh, in Azure Stack ACI product team. And I'm also on Twitter if you guys want to, uh, you know, send me anything uh, at Kirim Hanif. And um, so what we're going to talk about uh, today is a presentation that I uh, we recently created with uh, my colleague, uh, Cosmos Darwin fairly recently and it was the um it's the you know like uh i think we um uh, showed this in a community event a couple of uh, months ago just a month ago maybe and it's a very new content and you know hopefully it will help you understand the azure stack aci hybrid connectivity how it works and uh, we wanted to go into details so it's going to be uh, quite a lot of uh, detail and internals are going to be covered yeah, that is really exciting. I'm sure like our audience is going to love that, that we can actually go out and go through and uh, see what is actually, how is it built? How is it connected? How does different exactly. things work together? So I'm really looking forward to that. But before we start, uh, I quickly want to like ask you if you can explain a little bit maybe about Azure Stack, especially Azure Stack HCI and what it is, because we just recently announced it mm -hmm. and it was it recently went GA. Um, so not everyone is probably familiar with it. So I would mm -hmm. be happy if you could share a little bit for it. Yeah, sure. So um, this uh, is actually covered in 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 one of the uh, the. If you wanted to go and go to the basics of uh, what Azure Stack HCI, it's really great to uh, watch this Microsoft Inspire video that Cosmos has. Uh, uh, created so this is in youtube uh, you can see the link in here and um, so uh but in a nutshell it's basically uh if you think about it it's a new operating system uh for uh for microsoft and it's it's azure stack aci it was uh, built on top of windows server 2019 so uh, core so it doesn't have a ui uh, it's 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 very similar to that, but we added a bunch of things. We removed uh, a lot of things so that you know you can. It's optimized uh, for your scenario. It's not. Uh, it's uh, it's basically optimized for uh, being the best host for your scenario for yeah. your virtualization environment. Yeah, yeah, I heard like this is like this is I think our customer ask a lot, right? They needed like in the past they used Hyper-V and Windows Server um, and storage spaces direct and all of that. And this is basically, if I understand this correctly, this is like just an operating system optimized just for the hyper-converged scenario where you your team basically stripped out all of the features which are not needed in that case. Uh, and added some cool Azure stuff there and some additional functionality. So I'm really happy to to see what you have there. Yeah, exactly. So it's imagine that it's a uh, server that has the uh, failover clustering, uh, software-defined storage, and uh, software-defined networking uh, all together. And okay. uh, it has like like you said, we removed a bunch of the roles. So you cannot make it an Active Directory server or you know IAS. You can't use it as a web server. It's just to reduce the uh, uh, attack surface as well. So it's so it's secure, and we just wanted to uh, make it the best host uh, for your VMs in, in your environment. Okay, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. And just to add to that, maybe uh, one other thing is that it's actually uh, if you think about it, uh, it's basically runs on your server or on your on your premises with your uh, service that you bought from uh, your industry standards you know like a, sorry the OEM partners we have a lot of OEM partners and um, you can we have a marketplace where you can shop for these uh, servers uh, there's like a bunch of them that was pre-built so you can go to that marketplace get those and we'll have links to you know, like get to those uh, areas at the end of the uh, presentation. But you buy your servers, 
uh, you put it on your on your premises and then you connect it to the Azure and uh, and it's a subscription service that's that's the beauty of it so it's a subscription service you pay per core uh, of the, on the server so depending on the hardware that you buy um, so that's that's how you do it and and today we're going to explain how this basically works in the back end okay yeah that sounds really interesting because again as you just said it's deployed as an Azure service. It's not necessarily like, like in the past, I really like needed to pay for Windows Server. I licensed that once and then kind of like depending on what license I needed, I installed it. And now I actually download the OS, but the whole billing and, 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 and some additional features are done through uh, Azure. And so I'm really interested in how that works and what data gets sent and all of that. So really interesting. So can you explain a little bit more about like how it's actually delivered as a hybrid service and what that means? Sure. So let me just jump to the next slide and and so go through that. So first of all, there are no uh, software licenses. So the good thing about this is that since it's an Azure service, it comes um, with the Azure, uh, you know, you don't have any anything to sign, for example. You don't have any uh, standalone legal agreement to sign or anything like that. It's all covered under Azure services terms. And the other good thing is that you don't have to go to your uh, upper management and, you know, uh, and get this approved. Uh, because if you have Azure licenses, this is just another uh, service on top of uh, Azure. And it will be all built to your Azure subscription. That's the good thing. And same thing with support. So you don't have to worry about their support contracts. You don't have to worry about uh, like getting a different. So it's, if you have support in Azure, you can actually get support for uh, for uh, Azure Stack HCI. And the other good thing is uh, we will, uh, just like any other service, we will be uh, offering future updates, but they will be coming automatically from Azure to you. And all you need to do is just, just go to go over the uh, go over the update process and, and update it. And oh. we will be continually updating this uh, this service and adding new features. Okay. So it's really like it's like an Azure service. It's like I, I have the contract in, like the subscription in place. I don't need to take care of the versioning in that in that case. And I get the fantastic Azure support. Which I heard, I think, is a, if I'm right, and you correct me, is it is a dedicated team just for Azure Stack HCI. Exactly, exactly. We have uh, we we spend a lot of time with our. Uh, we have a dedicated PM that is working with the support team, and uh, just just for training and and making sure that. And we have very uh, close connections with them. So in case if they don't have the information they need, they they connect to us very uh, very easily, and uh, we work together as a team. Okay, so like with that, obviously there changes a lot in, in in terms. So how is that integrated into like the operating system itself? I'm sure there must be some magic in the background. Uh, you mean the uh, the support? Uh, no, in general, like the whole uh, like the whole hybrid. Oh, scenario. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So uh, let me go through that. So for example, uh, we have this like a native. Uh, OS level integration with Azure and everything uh, that you need for this service we already built it into Azure Stack ACI operating system so uh, the and the main component that makes this uh, possible is uh, called HCI SVC component so this is a a, a service that runs on and it's an integrated uh, service that runs on on the on the box and what it does is it securely stores azure uh, registration and connection state within the os um, it, it manages the projection uh, into the azure portal so your azure stack aci can actually show up in azure portal it uh, manages the connection heartbeat uh, licensing billing certificates uh, diagnostics and a lot more, right? So basically, this is the uh, secret sauce that makes the uh, hybrid connection make you know you know easy. But just to uh, be clear, this is not an agent. So this is different than an agent, right? So in agents, usually you know you need to figure it out. You need to like enable it. You need to start it. You need to troubleshoot it. This is like you don't need to do any anything for this. You know this is. 
um, you know, it, it goes together with the uh, OS. So if it, if the OS is updated, this is updated, and it's a protected process. So uh, you know, uh, it's it's a, it's a protected process within the OS. It's also cluster aware. So uh, if you add a node, uh, for example, to your cluster, it automatically propagates to that node. Uh, if you remove one, you know, it automatically cleans itself up. So it's hassle free. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool that it's not a not a agent like you have to again yeah. deal with. Uh, I see exactly. that we didn't want to do that. Yeah, I've seen that many many times that like hosts have like a ton of different agents on it, and especially if we would have another adding another agent for this. Uh, yeah, exactly. And also, like as you know, in uh, a lot of customers for everything that they put on their on premises service, they need to get approval, and they, they need to. Uh, make their case so that this agent you know is very useful uh, because they have their own golden image and in order to change that it's it's really hard yeah. right so this is uh, not something like that yeah no oh, awesome can you show us a little bit how how that actually looks yeah sure so uh let me actually uh do a sm uh, quick demo and in this demo i have uh, azure stack aci as you can see it's we are in windows admin center by the way and if you go down to services, you can see a bunch of services. And let's see, I, I just go to data duplication service, for example, right? So in that service, I can actually go ahead and stop it, uh, start it, whatever. But if I uh, search for Azure Stack HCI, I can see that service as well. And as you can see, this is for synchronizing Azure Stack HCI with Azure. But as you can see, you cannot stop it. You cannot restart it. You cannot pause it. This is something that you can have to, but this is also, this is in the user's context, right? So what if we go to Windows Admin uh, PowerShell as an administrator, and now I'm actually with the administrator, I'm looking for that service, I get the process, and I see, uh, you know, I, I try to stop it with the uh, process ID. And as you can see, I can't even stop it as an administrator, access is denied. So uh, this is, that's what I mean uh, when I mean that it's a protected service. And if I and I can also while I'm here, I can do get Azure Stack ACI and see that uh, and, and see my cluster, and I, I can see that the registration is not made; uh, it's it's empty. So uh, and that's what we're going to cover next. So how to actually register is 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 actually the next step. Okay, so. Okay, that is awesome. So you showed a couple of things. I, I love that. Like this is now really system protected because it's obviously an important part of the whole Azure Stack HCI system. And now you talked about the registration part, right? That was mm -hmm. something I want to ask. Like, so when I set this up uh, by default, like somewhere I need to like register it with my Azure environment, right? And you yeah. just like perfectly showed that that it's currently the state is not registered. So mm -hmm. why do we actually need to register it? So uh, good question because uh, I just also wanted to cover it. I I, I put a whole slide about this. Uh, registration is very important and it's not optional. It's totally required because it's a subscription service. So we have to know, uh, you know, if you think about it, it's it's like an Azure service that you buy, right? And, and we, we need to make sure that it's up to date, it's secure, it's uh, performant. And it's also like we have to make sure that uh, the billing is uh, is handled uh, automatically in the background, the licenses are, 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 are sent. So uh, it's supported. All of those things uh, require registration. So if you don't register it, then your system is not validly licensed. It's not supported. And it will also have a reduced functionality. So you cannot create uh, new VMs. OK. OK, that is good to know. Um, perfect. But so now, how do I register it? So let's say I set up my environment, as you just mm -hmm. showed me. Um, how do I register it? So let's see. So how you register is like, there are two easy ways. And one of them is uh, from a Windows Admin Center. And the other one is through Azure PowerShell. And um, it's, they're both very similar because the actually the Windows Admin Center experience is actually built in on top of Azure, uh, Azure PowerShell experience. So in both experiences, you need a couple of things. Uh, one of them is the Azure, your Azure subscription ID your region, 
And optionally, you can actually create it. The um, you can name this resource or put it in a resource group. You can do that. All of those things, uh, but it's optional. You don't have to have that. And the other uh, very important thing is that you need to authenticate with Azure uh, while doing this, because if you think about it, it's very important because you're actually creating this. Uh, you're adding this subscription to your sub uh, to your subscription. Uh, and we, you will get billed, your support will go through that. So we need to know, uh, you know, you need to validate uh, who you are in order yeah. for us to continue. Yeah, this makes sense. Like, I cannot just like assign my Azure Stack HCI to another <laughs> customer and he gets he gets billed for it. That would be- Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So maybe we can just dive into a little bit more, like how do you basically get this information, right? So uh, in case uh, you probably, a lot of you, uh, a lot of your viewers are probably uh, familiar with this, but uh, just to reiterate, so in order to find the subscription ID, you need to go to portal.azure.com and you navigate to uh, your subscription. Um, it's You can even search, uh, there's a search bar at the top. You can search for that, so your subscriptions, and you basically get a list of your subscriptions. And you can get a lot or you can get one. If you have one, you may have one. But uh, in our case, we have a lot because it's our test system that I took the screenshot from. And you go there and you copy paste your uh, subscription ID. It's that simple. OK. And the next thing that you do is you get your region, right? So uh, and as you know, Azure is in there are many, many data centers. There are many regions, and some regions have multiple data centers in them. And we are, as of uh, really, as of uh, general availability, we are in three regions right now: uh, East US, which is the default, by the way. So if you don't provide the region uh, in, let's say, in commandlet or you know, in, in in a command line, we actually take that by default. Um, Southeast Asia and West Europe. And we are also in 2021 uh, want to expand to multiple regions, and some of them are listed in here. Um, but be also just to let you know, of course, in Azure Stack HCI, it's a service, and we want it to be available to every region in that Azure is available. So that's the goal. But it's going to take a little bit while to get there. But that's our definitely our goal. Okay, but it's not like, let's just say, I mean, it's only a registration where some metadata and billing information gets sent. So no data, or like no VM gets automatically replicated to one. No, no, no. Right? Yeah, we're going to cover all of that uh, in, in coming slides, but no. And also, okay. like, uh, it's, it's good to clarify that you can be anywhere in the world. Right. Yeah. So you can run, you can be, you don't have to be in these regions to run Azure Stack ACI. You can be anywhere in the world. It's just that the region that you select for registration should be out of this three. Okay. Just to pick the closest one to you. Okay. That's, that's basically what it is. But you can run Azure Stack ACI anywhere in the world. Awesome. So you don't have to be in one of those uh, regions. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's good. Mm -hmm. So can you show me how to register it? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, let's go through the demo. So um, in order to uh, register, first thing that you need to do is uh, get the PowerShell module. I'm actually going to show you uh, the registration through PowerShell. You, you remember I mentioned two things and um, from Windows Admin Center or PowerShell, but I wanted to show uh, PowerShell because I wanted to, since this is a deep dive, I wanted to show uh, the what happens in the back end. Yep. So um, there is a module in the P PS, uh, the. PowerShell gallery, uh, and I think it's the most popular one. It's, it's called Azure AZ module, Azure module. Um, and there are like multiple sub models uh, under that, right? Uh, so one of them is Azure AZ dot, uh, Azure Stack ACI, and the other one is uh, AZ dot storage, AZ dot uh, app service, blah, blah. You can have multiple, you have all these services. Ours is AZ that Azure Stack ACI, but you don't have to install this. You can actually install the whole uh, Azure module, and you will get AZ that uh, Stack ACI anyway. Okay, awesome. And and when you do that, um, uh, once you do that, you know, like you basically get it on your server, and 
of course, uh, one of the reasons, uh, one of the things you may ask is, hey, you said everything is everything that I need is built in. How come this is not part of the OS? And the reason is that this whole AZ uh, module is updated every three weeks. So um, we don't update ours every three weeks, but the whole AZ uh, Azure module updates every three weeks. And we didn't want to uh, put something that is updated. Already, it's going to be like guaranteed to be updated in, into the OS and built into the OS. And yeah. then have you go through you know, like an update process. So that's why we didn't want to include it. It's easy enough to get it to the to the uh, to the uh, to the cluster. So that's why we didn't include this one in. Awesome. And let me go through the demo. So what I will do is uh, the first thing that I'll do is I just do a get cluster, and I see my cluster name. I get cluster node. I get the nodes names, and then the Azure Stack ACI. I see that I'm not registered, right? So I just go to register Azure Stack ACI, uh, and then you know the subscription ID. I provide the subscription ID, and then I go to dash region resource name. As you can see, these are optional, but I'm just going to select region and and select West Europe in this case. So and it basically starts uh, it starts the uh, process. But now I need to authenticate, and in order to authenticate, we're going to use device login. And I have a code here. So I copied that code, went to the uh, Microsoft.com device uh, login, and I entered that code uh, that I just uh, copied. And when you do that, uh, we, just, we just want you to then authenticate uh, with your credentials. Once, and, and when you actually successfully authenticate, then you come back. And yes, you can see everything continues running. Uh, so it will take around a minute or two. Uh, one minute or two. And once you do that, then you get a result code. And in this case, I got uh, success. Um, and then you can actually go and check that uh, you do another uh, get Azure Tag ACI again. You see that I'm registered. And you can see some things like resource name, resource URI, uh, some, some information as well. But the good thing is you when you go to Azure uh, portal.azure.com, uh, the fun thing is actually now you can see that demo cluster is there. Uh, it says preview in here, but of course you're not going to. We actually took this before uh, we released. Uh, it's not going to say preview in your case. Uh, and you can see we, we renamed the uh, resource group to your cluster's name automatically because you didn't provide it and the location. And you see some nodes, and uh, you see the nodes, and you see some basic information. And this info, this uh, view is going to get richer and richer uh, as we go along. But this is basically the uh, the, the first uh, iteration of it. OK, that is pretty cool. So I can now see already my Azure Stack HCI cluster. I can see I saw I could see the notes. And it actually shows up. And I can start like start doing a little bit of management. Um, I could exactly. manage the whole cluster using Windows Admin Center. But I can also even do it in the portal now. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to add more and more features uh, so that you can do a lot more uh, from the portal. Uh, we have some experiences already, but it's going to get uh, better going forward. And I just wanted to show you uh, a quick reference of what we covered, right? So um, as you uh, remember, we installed the uh, Azure module uh, with this commandlet. And then uh, we used the register AZ stack HCI uh, commandlet uh, to register. And uh, and again, Admin Center actually uses this uh, Windows Admin. If you're doing it from Ad Windows Admin Center, you don't have to provide all of these, uh, but it actually uses this in the back end. Um, and this part is uh, mandatory. You have to provide your subscription ID. This part, resource name and resource group name, is optional, but you can provide it if you want. And all the commandlets have actually the dash computer name and dash credential uh, so that you can remove them remotely uh, use them if you wanted to. So for example, um, you can run register Azure Stack ACI from another machine if that is more convenient to you. For example, in our test environment, we have our nodes and everything, but we never hardly ever connect to them, right? We have our mm -hmm. Windows 10 machine that we, we actually use as a management node and then you know have the admin center installed and we use that, right? So all of these uh, dash computer name and dash credential in all, all the other uh, Commandless, just like unregistered, 
uh, allows you to do that. And you can actually do uh, get stack, even get Azure Stack ACI uh, from a remote machine. Okay, that is pretty cool. So this is exactly how you register the machine. So this is what the, uh, me as a customer would do if I get a new Azure Stack ACI, install the nodes after cluster, I will then register it to the Azure environment. Now, since this is a deep dive wow. session, we obviously want to know a little bit more about what oh, yeah. is happening in the back end. Like, what is actually happening while I'm doing this? Sure. So there are four main things. And let's go through them one by one. Uh, the first one is when we register, we create uh, what we call the Azure AD app identity. This is uh, something that uh, this is an, an object that represents the cluster within your Azure Active Directory. It is quite important because imagine, right, that your on-premises cluster will do some things in your Azure tenant. For example, you know, like upload billing information, that's the easiest example. And you have to have, a, and it has to have a permission to do that. So we need to have an identity in the context of your tenant's Azure AD. So this identity is, by the way, uh, completely constrained by the normal role-based access control of uh, Azure. And there are uh, two permissions that we need. Um, and as you can see in the screenshot uh, at the bottom of the screen, they are called Azure Stack ACI Billing.sync and Azure Stack ACI Census.sync. So if you are a global admin in your in your Azure AD and you're using this uh, using the commandlets or uh, or Windows Admin Center using that uh, on on that context, then everything will be very easy. It will just go through just like I showed you in the demo. But if not, then you need to have these permissions granted to the app identity that represents Azure Stack ACI in your tenants. So you can either have your AAD admin to uh, grant this. You know, you can basically tell him, you know, I need, you know, you to grant this to to these two uh, uh, permissions, or um, you can have them give you you give you you delegate uh, access. You can delegate the permissions to you, and you can do that uh, from the same location. But either way, we basically need uh, need this so to allow the on-premises cluster so to send anything to Azure on your behalf. Okay. So that's 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 one important part. And the second is the certificates. So. Um, with the app identity, you establish, you know, like the representation of your, uh, you know, uh, on-premises cluster within your Azure AD, right? But now, what you need to do is you have to let the on-premises nodes to trust and authenticate with Azure AD. So uh, that's what you'll be basically doing with these uh, with these uh, certificates. And the public key is uh, is treated as the credentials uh, by the app. And the private key is securely scored, stored in the HCI SVC service that we mentioned at the, at the beginning on-prem. And there are two experiences that you uh, use. One of them is uh, to allow everything to be managed by the cluster. And it's by the, by, the, by the way, this is the default experience. This is what we use in, internally. And this is completely secure. And we definitely recommend this is the recommended experience. And, and by far, it's the easiest one. Uh, what it is is that there is one cert uh, per cluster node. It's an industry standard X509 uh, certificate, self-signed with a very long RSA key. Uh, it's generated on each node, and it expires uh, after one year. But the good thing is the HVI SVC service handles the renewal for you. So it's automatically renewed. So you don't ever have to think about the certificates generated at the time of registration. It is... Um, Renew, renewed on the fly for you. Okay. Yeah, and, that I, yeah, that I like. That, that is that is awesome, right? I mean, that's. I mean, you wanted to make everything easy. So, uh, and this is like, we we totally can tell you that this is. Uh, we don't see any security issues with this approach. Okay. Okay. Now this is but, awesome because I've dealt with a lot of like <laughs> certificates you need to manage and renew and take care of. And downtime, so, right? It causes downtime. It causes like a lot of issues. And and imagine this is a host that you're running, your a lot of VMs. So you don't want that. Yeah. And also the uh, the other thing is, uh, but we know that some customers they have a mandate, right? They have to use their own certificates. They cannot use self-signed certificate. 
So that's why we provide the second experience. <clears throat> and for that one, you just need to go to each node under certificates, local machine, and add the certificate from your CA, uh, the certificate authority, certificate authority. And then when you register, then you can basically specify dash uh, certificate thumbprint and provide that thumbprint in the command. There's a there's that uh, additional flag to do that. But of course, this is the certificate you brought in, right? So you need to maintain it. You need to make sure that uh, to remember to renew it when it expires. Um, so that's 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 the uh, that's the disadvantage the of it. Yeah, downside yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes absolutely sense. Yeah, I, I would. I definitely prefer the default one, but I completely understand that some customers exactly want you have to do it, right? Have to do it. Yeah. I mean, there's no other way. So. And then what we do is the third thing that we do is probably the most visible one is that we create an Azure resource that is provisioned by the Azure Stack ACI resource provider. Uh, and we provision that into the resource group of your in your tenant. And, and you can provide that as you know. Um, this uh, resource has a type of uh, Microsoft at Azure Stack ACI uh, slash cluster. The good thing is this is a first class ARM object. So what that means is that you can search for it, you can participate, it, it participates in a, in graph, you can organize it with tags and all of those good things, right? And the other important thing is that this is the foundation for hybrid management. So if you think about uh, like, we have like so many scenarios coming in like free scale monitoring, VM cell service and much, much more. And all of these, uh, need uh, this first class object uh, that can actually represent Azure Stack HCI that you know can participate in Azure Stack uh, Azure's uh, resource manager model and and actually it is the keystone for all of this yeah no i think i think what i like what you what you said here and i think a lot of people like i mean we went through and said basically uh, just very quickly it's now a arm object right but um, that means a lot. It's like it basically is like Azure Arc. Like it has kind of like Azure Arc built in to actually connect yes. it. it. Gives you that full experience of, as you said, like I can use tags, I can use resource groups. So if I'm aware of that, I can leverage it. It's not just like just populate the name and just give it the string of yeah. like. And it opens up a bunch of other things that we, we we are planning to do in the back end. That's why I'm saying that this is the foundation because we. If you didn't have this, then all of these scenarios that you'll see coming to Azure Stack ACI is not would not be possible, right? So, so that's why it's, it is the foundation. And the last thing that we do uh, after this, and four out of four, is we sorry we do a first sync, what we call a first sync, and we issue the cloud license. So in Azure Stack ACI, we sync uh, with Azure twice per day, so every 12 hours. So it, when it successfully syncs, uh, and, and also it checks, by the way, during that time, if the subscription is active, meaning that your email address is current and you're paying the bills, et cetera. And then uh, what happens is we automatically refresh these cloud-issued licenses and push them to each of the nodes. And these licenses uh, allow Azure Stack ACI to fully function. They indicate to us that this is a completely legitimate instance of an Azure Stack ACI uh, OS, right? And um, but the, but the thing that to uh, to uh, to pay attention to is that these cloud issues licenses will expire after thirty days. So, but what happens is every twelve hours, uh, you know, it actually automatically renews them. So okay. it syncs every 12 hours and it renews every 12 hours. So it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, like it doesn't wait for 30 days to renew them, right? And it does this across all nodes. So if one new new node joins, you know, new license comes in. And if you remove a, a, a node, the license will be removed. And everything is invisible to the user. It's all in the background. Uh, but uh, this is important because in, in the case that the Azure Stack ACI is in policy, yeah, but of course, you know, like there can be some cases, uh, you know, where you, uh, you know, network goes down or it goes offline, and we didn't want anything to happen during that time. So you have thirty days grace period. So uh, if we cannot, you know, reach like again, like trying twice a day for thirty days 
30 consecutive days, uh, the license will expire. Okay. Okay. And and you can get this, uh, and you can see this in get uh, Azure Stack HCI commandlet. You can also see it in Windows Admin Center, so we're not hiding anything. Uh, and your basically connection status will go to a state called out of policy, uh, which means that you know, like you 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 haven't been synced uh, for the past thirty days. So all you need to do is just fix your connection, uh, you know, get the cluster online again, and get the licenses uh, synced uh, renewed. Okay. And sure. and also the good thing is you can sync whenever you want. So let's say you fixed your connection. Uh, you don't have to wait 12 hours. You, there's a uh, you can go, go through the Windows Admin Center. There's a uh, there's a sync option through the settings tool, or you can use sync dash Azure Stack ACI command. It. Okay, so that is pretty cool. So like even like very unlikely, but if I like have a huge disaster, like my connection is gone or something like that, uh, for like I don't know, let's say it's 20 days already, everything is like I don't have any internet connectivity. What I could do, basically, I could set up, for example, a a connection over a phone, for example, and exactly. just force it to sync the license so that there's no issue if I have that that problem, right? Um, yeah. Okay. And also, like, we are not. Uh, uh, you, you that means you know, like that you can definitely have your Azure Stack ACI in a spotty network connections locations. <clears throat> you just need to make sure that the first thing happens. That's yep. the important part. That then that's where you get your first license. Uh, and it's part of the registration anyway. Uh, but then, you know, like if Azure Stack ACI loses connection, uh, you can basically uh, sync every 30 days and you're, you're fine. Awesome. So that would also allow me, especially with forcing it, like I, I'm thinking about a scenario where I take my Azure Stack ACI cluster on the road, where I then, for example, could say, okay, now sync. And then for the next two days, I'm on the road. Exactly. And it would work. And then we'll I work. could. Force it again. Okay. And it's awesome. consecutive 30 days, right? So if you sync any time in between every every 12 hours, the 30 days starts again. Yeah. So it's okay. a moving, moving 30 days. Perfect. Perfect. This is awesome. So now obviously this is um a question now about connectivity. We already touched this a little bit when we, ha mm -hmm. when we have a connectivity issue. What are the requirements uh yeah. for connectivity? So I actually have uh you know I, I prepared this as a frequent ask questions kind of a fashion. So these are the most, you know, like, uh, you know, frequent questions that we get. So first of all, uh, the first question that we always get is, uh, does Azure Stack ACI require continuous uh, connectivity to the cloud, right? So we just hand, we just talked about it. No, uh, you know, we can uh, handle uh, periods of limited or even zero connectivity, right? Um, and what if what happens? So let's say you connect, you, you lost your connection, right? What happens if the uh, connection goes down? The, the, my uh, VM stop running or anything? No, everything con will continue to run uh, just normally. And even you know, like your local tools like AC VMM, Windows Admin Center, PowerShell, these are all local, right? You don't need connectivity for these, and they will continue running. So we're not going to uh, give you any uh, any problem doing doing that. Yeah. So there's no dependency I need to the cloud every like if I want to do something I could like as you said still use the local tools. Exactly. Um, and the time is 30 consecutive days. Uh, like how long will it take? You know how long Azure Stack ACI would run without the connection down is 30 days. And um, so there, are, this is also very, very popular, right? Can I use Azure Stack ACI and never connect to Azure? So air gap situations where a, a, a part of the network is totally separate from, from, the, from the network, from internet connection. And no, you cannot use Azure Stack ACI in these uh, scenarios. And the last one is, are there bandwidth or latency requirements? Uh, no, there's nothing like that. We are, uh, we send very, uh, we upload very little information to the cloud every day, kilobytes worth. And, and that's why we're okay, you know, like therefore it's uh, okay to actually run in very low bandwidth locations like T1 lines or even cellular lines or even like high latency lines like satellite connections, we're totally fine. We are not sensitive to disruptions in the connection, and also we are not uh, sensitive to the bandwidth of the connection. Okay. Okay. And of course, it begs the question now, like, okay, so if 
that, that's what you need. Like, what do I need to do on my firewall, <laughs> right? And everybody has like lots of uh, <laughs> lots of firewalls. Now you have one in, in, on on the defender firewall, and then you may have your other firewalls, your perimeter firewalls. Um, and just to be clear, you know, uh, having access to Azure is very different than unlimited internet access. We're not talking about unlimited internet access here, right? So we just need to give access to Azure. And what we need is a one-way, just outbound direction access uh, over secure 443 HTTPS port uh, to very well-known and published and updated weekly Azure IP addresses. Okay, so that's all you need. And we are part of that. Uh, so, and also you can minimize the exfiltration list, uh, risk by scoping rules that allow outbound traffic very specifically in these ways. So we can, you know, like uh, as Microsoft, we published the list of uh, in Azure uh, IP addresses, uh, like I mentioned, uh, weekly. And Azure services all included, Azure Stack ACI is also part of that. So you can quite easily get that list and there are multiple ways of doing this, and, and there are lots of help uh, out there that, that you can do this. And uh, you can get that list, and what, 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 so that's what's called like network service tags, and then apply that to your configuration on, uh, to your firewall. And you can also do like automation with the scripts and everything. And on the right-hand side, you can see the endpoints that we need. Uh, there are six of them. So uh, we need the front door, uh, resource manager, Azure resource manager, Arc infrastructure, because Arc is included in 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 Azure Stack. So you don't have to do anything in, to have Arc. That's how we project your uh, cluster in Azure portal. Azure traffic manager, Azure Active Directory. We, we talked about that a lot. And optionally, that's why it has an asterisk. Uh, PowerShell gallery, but it's very convenient, right? Because if you don't have access to PowerShell uh, Gallery, then you need to manually transfer the modules that we talked about uh, to do the things like registration. Okay. And and just to be clear, you have to do these uh, permissions both on the Defender firewall and through the other firewalls or perimeter firewalls that you you may have in your environment. Yeah. And uh, one more thing is that uh, this is coming soon. It's one of the, probably going to be one, uh, one of the first feature updates is including in 2021 is going to include this, is uh, we are actually making this easy for the v Defender Firewall. Uh, we are going to automatically update it. We are going to automatically check the IP address uh, list that I talked about, weekly IP addresses that I talked about. If anything changes in there, we are going to automatically uh, update your Defender firewall, so you don't have to do anything in that sense. Oh, this is uh, this is really great because this is now. Yeah. I mean, I would just probably today I would just probably open it and let, just let my, yeah. my company firewall do everything. But now with that, I get even more secure because it also limits the IP addresses and stuff like that, right? Exactly, and. Um, but of course, like this doesn't change the fact that you have, if you have a perimeter firewall, you need to you need the automation and scripts to update that yourself. So, yeah. But at least on the on the uh, defender firewall, uh, you're good. Yeah. So again, so we talked about network connectivity and what how how I need to set it up and what I actually need. Now, a lot of people now have the question, and a lot of customers have the question. Okay, so what what about data privacy, and what does get sent? Does my data like what kind of like data goes out, and and yeah. do I have control and and whatnot? So we've got a lot of and, questions. Yeah, it's it's a good question, and it's uh, one that is uh, very cl uh, very close to me because I actually am a PM for that, <laughs> so I worked on it, and uh, data privacy is very important, right? So, and just to uh, let you know, it's it might be quite surprising to many folks that Azure Stack ACI, actually we are raising the bar for data privacy as compared to Windows Server. Because if you look at this example, for example, in Windows Server 2019, uh, as you know, like it had the uh, Windows telemetry built into it, it's enabled by default. You can of course turn it off, but it's enabled by default and it's transmitting fair amount of data by default, right? But I'm sure you guys are very simple, or your audience is very familiar with Windows Telemetry. So we took this dramatic step in Azure Stack ACI and turned the Windows uh, Telemetry completely off. 
So if you look at the Azure Stack ACI, all the nodes, uh, if you go to the Windows telemetry, it's set to security. And there are four levels. And I think we're going to change this into like uh, rec off required and optional three levels in the future. But right now there is off security enhanced and full. There are four levels and security is, is equals to off. Uh, so you don't send anything. Uh, it's the lowest level. And, and we actually did a bunch of tests like exhaust tests like just to see like if, if we're emitting it and we turn, turned out we are not sending anything. So uh, it's totally off. But of course, you know, like we need some information because this is a service, this is a subscription service on your environment, so that we need to make sure that it's the billing is, you know, sent, uh, or you know, like the or your services are up to date, you know, secure and running the way they should. So we introduce the service health monitoring, and service health monitoring is is the uh, is the is the difference uh, between uh, Windows and and, uh, and Azure Stack ACI. And it is quite a uh, minimum amount of information that you can you would ever need uh, to, to basically run it again, like up-to-date, secure, and uh, performance. Nice. And let me just go through like what we usually get, uh, a lot of questions that, again, in a frequently asked questions fashion, OK? Mm -hmm. So what do we think? Um, we think that, as, as I mentioned, diagnostics data, we, sh we obviously sent, sent the billing data, how many cores you have. And, and again, you know, like uh, basic information to be able to show you the cluster in the Azure portal. Because if you go to Azure portal, you will see the VMs, you will see some information, just the basic information about the VMs and the, how many cores you have. So that, that information needs to be sent so that you can show it in Azure portal. So those are the things that we said. And we are, and you'll see in the coming slides, we are very transparent. We, are, we want it to be 100% transparent with this information. And, um, and of course, the other question is, does my personal data stored in Azure Stack ACI and get sent to the cloud? No, definitely not. Names, metadata, configuration of contents of your VMs are not sent to the cloud. Unless you basically set up a service like Azure Site Recovery, none of these are uh, sent to the cloud. And PII data, so is it sent to the cloud? Uh, no. The closest thing that I can think of that we have is the cluster ID, that is uh, unique information, and uh, and also the hash of your hardware ID. Uh, and again, these are needed because we need to display uh, this information in your portal. Also, we need to track that, uh, you know, like, because uh, in Azure Stack ACI, when you install it, you get it 30 days for free. But when you uninstall it, you shouldn't be able to install it again and get another 30 days for free. So that's how we basically track. So we need those information. And how much uh, diagnostics data is sent to the cloud? It, few kilobytes. It's not a lot at all. And what, how is it used? It's mainly used by engineering system, uh, engineering team. Uh, to make sure that everything is running securely and properly. And data is kept in the US and it's only, uh, we only look at the aggregated data. We never look at individual data. And just to prove my point that we are 100% uh, transparent, these are everything that we are sending. This is it. So it all fits in one uh, slide. And and if you if you look at it closely, you can see that there are things like you know, like how many crashes you had, if you had a firmware update uh, and, and you had a crash, is this because of the firmware update or is it because of the, you know, like a type of drive you have? It's just this information we need. Okay. So that's why uh, yeah. we basically, and, and we were, I mean, we just took this unprecedented st step and show you exactly everything uh, that you are sending. This is awesome. This is like, this will make a lot of customers very happy uh, because then you can just basically go and say, hey, look, this is all the data. And like, especially if you're like in the IT department, you're setting up your stack HCI cluster and then you need to show, for example, the security people, like the responsible people for that. You need to tell them, hey, what is actually getting sent? And then you can just take that slide now you're showing and basically go actually, out. Actually, they can do better than that. Yeah, Let it. me show you how you can do better than that. Uh, they can actually see their own data themselves. 
So that's even better, right? <laughs> because yes. now, now you're not actually showing something that is, you know, like pre-created and, uh, you know, like in my own environment, you can actually yeah. have, they can see exactly what they're sending. And again, this is, uh, uh, this is for, uh, to be 100% transparent on this. And, um, you just need to enable this, uh, event log channel, uh, just using this top, uh, commandlet, uh, command and then you use the get win event commandlet to configure it mm -hmm. and 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 just to watch it right to read the log and uh and here is a script that you know because it's it's not formatted uh in a tabular format so you can actually use this list to see it in a very uh friendly way uh, in a tabular format as well so uh, and then you can send this to your security department or any interested departments uh, any departments that are interested in this and oh, wow. you can easily see this yeah this is awesome like this is like i i think I've, this makes a lot of customers very happy so you can actually go and say hey look i can always look if you don't trust us like with like what we are telling you what it sends you can yeah. have a look at it yourself and see what we are actually exactly. sending this is exactly. awesome really love that that feature So uh, we were talked a lot about uh, a lot of things, right? We, we we talked about like how hybrid is built in, how to register, what happens when you register, the connectivity requirements, and 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 bunch of things, right? So uh, so what do you think? Like, uh, well, where do you think this is going? This is this is this is already <laughs> pretty pretty awesome. Like a lot of stuff. Um, uh, which we actually helps us to like start the management um, out of like out of Azure and and providing that, but I'm definitely want to see more uh, what will be coming. Yeah. What we what we actually what your team is enabling uh, us to do with that hybrid connection. As you as you said before, this is probably just the foundation of what you're gonna deliver. Exactly. Um, nice, nice. And 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 like just like you said, this is just the foundation, right? This is just the foundation. This is just the start. We're just getting started. Uh, and we, you know, as you may have already, uh, you know, like uh, figured out, we spent a lot of time and thought about uh, what each component and what what hybrid connection, hybrid experience should look like, right? And we did this because we want to deliver these very valuable scenarios. And you will see all of these coming like uh, fleet scale monitoring in Azure portal, Cerso's virtual machines from Azure portal. All of those things are coming. And these are the things that customers ask us all the time, right? So, yeah. so that's why we had to have this foundation. You know, we, we, we wanted to uh, bring this, you know, like we wanted to, you know, like put the thought and care to data privacy, the connectivity requirements, making it robust, making it self-managed and making so that certificates renew themselves, the licenses take care of themselves, firewall configuration can be done automatically. The support is part of Azure. So all of these things so that we have this very strong foundation so that we can deliver all of these scenarios without any, uh, any problems uh, in the future. Yeah. And it's it's very exciting, and uh, I think there are like a lot of exciting uh, and, and a lot of scenarios that will make a lot of you excited uh, in the future. And um, yeah, absolutely. So now I was really looking forward to. There's a couple of things like fleet monitoring. I have a I talked to a bunch of customers, and what they have is like they have like either branch offices, factories, or um, like retail stores where they actually need to have. Some some infrastructure to run their their virtual machines on top of it, or their Kubernetes clusters, or whatnot, um, mm -hmm. and they actually need to have like kind of like they want to have a central place to manage all of that. They don't necessarily want to build all these VPN connections to all of these, right? They they yeah. want to have just a very easy way to manage their these environments. And I think as you're just showing here, like fleet management monitoring in the Azure portal or self-service creation of virtual machines in the Azure portal. I mean, this is going to be really, really cool for a lot of them. Yeah. And and a lot of customers, if you think about it, they all, I mean, in my experience at least, it's hybrid is, you know, they don't have everything in the cloud. Like if they yeah. do, like it's an exception, right? And it's every all the customers they have both. Yeah. So that's why hybrid is super important, I think. 
Yeah, I think this is this is a great example. Like the whole Azure Stack HCI like scenario, it really shows like one of the like best hybrid cases in general. Like how you can actually take advantage of the cloud to make your on-premises environment even better, right? I mean, yeah. you can run virtualization. We did that for years We're using Windows Server, Hyper-V, Storage Space Direct, and you can still do that. But this brings it to the next level where you can, where you don't need to move everything to Azure, where you still can run it locally, but you can connect it to Azure and take advantage of the power of exactly. Azure and the capabilities. So this and, is and, cool. and just to, uh, you know, like you, a lot of people well, were probably aware, but if you look at the Azure uh, stack uh, portfolio, you have three products, right? You have uh, in one side, you have Azure Stack Hub, which is fully controlled, 100% controlled. And you have your uh, you you buy your hardware from uh, from OEM uh, and you get your support from there. You cannot you know like you cannot control it, but you have your Azure uh, and experience is very similar to Azure Portal. The uh, but it's on prem. And on the other end, you have uh, Azure Stack Edge, which is the you know like at the at the end of your network and and you have your iot devices connected to it so all of those like all of to cover all of those scenarios and azure stack aci is in the middle so so azure stack aci is something that uh, you know you can actually use your own hardware and uh, to come up with these uh, and, and to bring these all these scenarios uh, and all these experiences in, into play so yeah. It's best of both both worlds, I think. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like flexible. It's like you get you get parts of it like fixed, like the operating system, but then you obviously get the flexibility to use different hardware and also have access to it and configure it the way. And they're also want. verified hardware. OEMs, yeah. you know, uh, they, they they put it in our if if any hardware is in our catalog, then it means that the OEMs sign up uh, sign up on it and they they support it and they they purposefully built it to be this. Um, uh, on-prem uh, great virtualization host uh, for your environment and they configure all the ram and all the, you know ios and everything uh, for that purpose oh that's awesome and again i love completely love our hybrid story and i think it's very much very important to highlight that we don't have just one product which does hybrid right uh, we really want to give customers the choice from different hybrid solutions depending on their needs, whatever they want to build or need to build. And so I'm sure we have now a lot of customers who actually want to have a deeper look at Azure Stack HCI and all the things we just talked about. So if I want to know more about it, where do I go? Great. So our my call to action is uh, I have a bunch of uh, links in here. I, I wanted to I uh, provide you guys. The first one is the product page. And in the product page, all of these links below are actually can be found in the product page. So azure.microsoft.com, products, Azure Stack, azure.stack uh, slash HCI. Um, and, and a couple of the links in there that I really enjoy uh, and I used myself, one of them is evaluation guide. Um, it's awesome. I mean, uh, if you if you go there and and look at look at it, it's on it's, it's in GitHub actually, and it will take you to GitHub. And and what it has is uh, it it uses like uh, you can actually it shows you with scripts and step by step how you can configure Azure Stack HCI in your nested VMs. Yeah. So you don't have to have uh, you know on-prem resources or clusters or servers to be able to test this. So you can and and it's thirty days for free. So, so you get 30 days for free. You're not going to be charged for 30 days. Uh, so you can go ahead and use that. And there are scripts you can either do step by step from the UI, or you can actually even have like a bunch of PowerShell scripts. And the good thing is you can take those PowerShell scripts and use it in your own environment as well, right? So that's uh, that's uh, that's very uh, nice. The learn uh, learn. Learn paths are really, really good. There are like, it talks about the foundations, what you need to learn to get better at Azure Stack ACI. And we have a bunch of information about the pricing and everything, of course. Uh, and then I just wanted to also call out our documentation. As PMs, we spend a lot of time with our documentation team and to make sure that they have the right information. We work very, very closely with them. And, uh, and, and all of these data collection, firewall configuration, everything is there. And this is the main page for documentation. So, so all of these will help you a lot. 
Awesome. This is awesome. Uh, and again, we will put all the links uh, into the description below. And so you can just go out and click on these as well. Um, just feel free to check it out. I highly recommend also the learning path. Um, I also took it myself to actually learn all the little bit of the things. So if you want to learn more, check out Microsoft Learn. There are some great modules, not just for Azure Stack HCI, but for a lot of other Azure topics or other for even like other Microsoft topics like Dynamics or Microsoft 365. So that is awesome. So with that, I really want to say thank you, Karim, uh, for being here today. I was really of course, a pleasure. my pleasure. I learned a lot, um, especially the data part. I think they're going to make a lot of customers very, very happy um, to actually see like, how this, these things are working in the back end and how, what is gets sent to Azure and how do we actually deal with these log data information. So thank you very much again. And for those out there uh, who want to learn more about the different scenarios, about different hybrid topics we're talking about, check out our event at aka.ms slash ops talks. And you will find more sessions. You will find more about Azure Stack HCI. For example, AKS on Azure Stack HCI. You will find topics about Windows Server, uh, Azure, and much, much more. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed that session. Thank you.